Okay, sorry I didn't video all that part, but that was just basically taking down to one more level. So I pulled out all that extra insulation, that styrofoam half inch stuff. And when it came down to it, this side is flush now. And it is insulated and it's somewhat taped. So I think the only reason that it had that extra layer is because for somebody to be laying here, um, number one, so they'd stay warmer. And I think this part was insulated out another inch or so for sure, uh, because there's an electrical box where the electrical box was and the cords are coming out of it. I think just because he didn't want to pull that electrical, whoever built that did not want to pull that electrical box out. So instead they built the wall out to make it flush. And for him, it didn't matter that your wall needed to be nice and flush, like my brain wants me it to be. And same with this one. So that's perfect for that. My next step, I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna take off the edging from the door and I'm gonna take off this fan and whatever this access plate is, um, and then start pulling the roof down. And I know that's kind of a daunting task. There's no screw holes. It's just got these little nail holes, but it's extra weight. That's potentially, it's not good weight. And I don't know what's on the other side of there. So I'm gonna pull that all down. That'll give me a lot more weight when I have to add materials back on. So I thought about just putting no more nails here and putting new material over top this that just stuck right to it. But that's bad juju, they call that stuff because here for instance is a spot where that just feels pretty spongy. And you know what? I'd rather start anew and get all that crap off of there. That's the better, that's the right way to do it and I'm gonna do it the right way, period. So I'm gonna start working on a couple of these. Before we take the roof off, we're going to have to do this fixture. So this now is sealed from the outside with a ring of caulking finishing stuff all the way around and I'm going to have to go up there, unscrew it there off the top. Then do the taping on the top, then put the skylight back down again. It's a few steps but that's good. That Little access. Hat. Ooh, it's a power out. Need a power outlet? No, that's probably maybe for the fan or the air conditioning that was up there before. I don't know. But we can decide to close it right up if we want. We don't have to keep it there. I might just pull the guts out of it and seal it. Let's start ripping down some of the ceiling. We'll just see what we have underneath there. <laughs> Roll bars. Okay, 
Now you can really see the skeleton. So I won't be standing on that. The new stuff is gonna go up really nice. Cut strips of insulation, put between some of these big spots. That's a smart thing to do. And then I can reinforce. Bing, the light just went on. I wanna put my canoe up top when it's time to go on adventures and I need something steel on the top, like a rails. So now that I've exposed this part, I can put something on this side to help reinforce what's going on top and make it all stronger. Because I was just actually gonna drill into some stuff up there and hopefully I hit some studs and hopefully it worked out okay, but now I can actually make a very good effort at making this proper, like bomb proof. I gotta get another roll of that stuff, I will. But I think I'm gonna need a full vapor barrier after I insulate. Structure, insulation, planning for power and such. Vapor barrier, no. Nope. Planning for where I'm gonna cut holes if I need holes. Infrastructure solar panels and that sort of thing insulation vapor barrier skin painting finishing yeah so we're in exposing which is the one before planning well not really but you know what i mean <sighs> sometimes off D to take off C to take off A to take off A sometimes you get to take off D to take off C to take off B to take off A skin doesn't offer a whole lot of structural integrity on there so it's really the outside that really holds it all together for me it almost makes a lot of sense to expose everything on the ceiling too because i think some insulation up between these rafters is going to be a brilliant idea to keep the heat in here more work 100 percent more work in fact, probably about four to eight more hours more work just to now insulate this ceiling afterwards. 
unless I can get help somehow. So case in point, if you're thinking of doing this and didn't really want to go all the way with it, is that up here where the vent is on the outside, I pulled out some tiny pieces, two pieces of this styrofoam. And you can see there's an area for birds and there's a nest that something was starting to make up there. And you know what, I'm just gonna seal that from the outside. I might even leave that vent on there just as a vanity piece. I don't know. So here's my roof. And I just cleaned some snow off. I didn't realize it's this um, cloth material. Anyway, so this is what I bought for my canoe. The bike racks. And then I bought these mount pieces. I don't know what they're called. And so, I'm going to put that on there, and that leaves just enough room to get straps underneath. And I'm going to, towards the back, I'm going to right, right justify them so the canoe can come up from passenger side as close to this side as possible. Right, so here we are on the underneath side. So as these pieces are going to come through, you know, the ceiling, like this, I'm just going to probably have to put some more wood strapping. I got just some one one by ones. I think they're like one and a quarter by one and a quarter. Same as these ones. And this part's gonna be up and invisible. The bottom of this is gonna be here and I'm just gonna reinforce and tighten that up. And then those racks won't go absolutely anywhere. That is my goal. Here's exactly what I mentioned. This with the rack up top that I'll show you in a bit. Here's the two back pieces that come down. So they don't have anything to grab onto and the roof is very thin metal. So I need to actually build braces that goes through here. So I'm gonna build a couple, probably sort of one as a prototype and then stick the other ones in there. And they're going to have to be super strong between probably this one, probably tied right into, into this one, tied into the back here. Yeah, and those will be just perfect. Nice and solid. So here we are, day three. I got a compressor hooked up to the nail gun. And we're doing canoe rack supports up top. So as you can see where it comes in off the metal roof right here, there's really nothing there to make it solid. So I'm making these h brack supports and then this is what's going to pull that canoe down or the rack down and then that's going to hold it in place. And then if those get pulled up enough, I might be able to cut off these parts. Maybe not, I don't know, but at least then I know it's not going to go anywhere and it's supported, so that's what we're going to do. Canoe, two for the front, two for the back. That's next. Okay. The enforcement is pretty much done. Now what? Now we're going to take that extra insulation. That I have and stick it between all these areas, all these little rectangles. I'm gonna get the extra insulation.
jack stands are a pain in the ass because um, I don't have any tools with them, so I'm going to make some tools for it. So I grabbed a chunk of dowel. And this is one and a quarter inch dowel, and I cut it five inches and five inches for that one. And for this threaded stuff, I got it in a one foot chunk that came like that. I cut it six inches there, so I've got half. Now what I want to do is I want to take these things and embed them in the middle of here. So we're going to have, sorry, we're going to have this sticking out of the end and the wood part becoming your handle and the threaded part becoming the part that fits in with the jack. And then you'll just be able to put it in the jack and crank it. Okay, after a quick clean up and filling out a couple of those spots that I had up top, we are completely sealed on the top. Not sealed, insulated. Insulated on the top. So now I'm going to take a vapor barrier and start on the walls. Do the walls first and then we'll overlap the ceiling. So here we are, Dexter's little area. So I've done everything with this original flooring. I'm going to take some of this MDF now and I'm going to do the bed first. Just because I want to. It's a nice clean 4x8 almost piece. And I'm denting up this really nice um, foamed plastic. Alrighty, here's one of the next steps I'm going to do. This is ceiling material, and I bought it initially, um, probably thinking about putting this honey-colored side on, uh, like it's showing. And then I realized there were stickers on that side only, and Googled it, and these are meant to go the other way. So this is a really nice cedar-type color, um, also going to be beautiful. And then I decided I wanted to put some bees on it. Why? I'm not really sure. I think they'll look cool up there. So I'm doing some bees right now. I tried a few different kinds of bees and different kind of lasering techniques. And so right now I'm going to continue lasering bees on the ceiling before I put this, put the, put them up on the ceiling. <laughs> if I can spit that out properly. So I've got a little bit of yellow angelus paint. I'm probably just gonna touch these up. They came out actually really good. Some of them are not quite as detailed just because of the wood. 
I think that's going to be cool. Honeybees going in like a big sort of S pattern up on my ceiling. Why? I don't know. Because I decided that would be a cool idea. So that's what I'm doing now. grubby clothes on again and we're back to start doing the ceiling so what I'm going to do with that is because it's kind of difficult after I put the board up to see where each one of these wooden areas are that I'm going to try and brad nail to it's hard to see them so on the sides of the wall over here I'm going to mark them with my sharpie at each one and that way I'll have a general idea with my brad nailer one-handed on how to put them. So before I do that, I'm gonna buy get some of this adhesive. I was using no more nails, but this stuff is way cheaper and it's just an adhesive. I just had to buy, it's constructor, it's huge. Construction adhesive. I don't know if it's backwards because of video, but anyway. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna mark all the spots along the way and along the back. Uh, and then I'm going to put this stuff on all the areas, all the cross members, and then I'm going to bring the panel in, put the panel up with one hand and a brad nailer. I'll try to fix it myself. Here we go. 